What's up, family? Uh, didn't really get an opportunity to uh, put many of these out this month. You know, I've, I've been putting out content, but I haven't been talking to you guys. Uh, because this month is a busy month, May, that is, um, due to the fact that my birthday's in May, my fiance's birthday's in May, um, there's Mother's Day, and then there's uh, Memorial Day. So almost every week I've had a lot to do. Um, so with that said, I've been kind of away, but you will see more consistent uh, content and hopefully quality content coming your way. Um, also, we, we, we bought, a, obviously, a, another uh, pup into the family. Uh, so it's the third one now. But uh, she keeps us running around, too. So if I look tired, that's why. Um, but I just wanted to touch on a few things, and then I'll let you guys go. But um, one being um, the Randy Gregory situation, I think that uh, Roger Goodell will come down to the wire as it pertains to him, and he'll, he'll deliberate probably on the last day. But... Think about this, uh, just for a second, Second, especially those of you who were very critical of the moves not made in free agency uh, concerning the Cowboys. Look at our defense and think about the weaknesses, if any, uh, if any. We have one question mark, and that's that middle linebacker. You know, how well will Van Der Esch play his first year? I don't think Jalen Smith at the Sam is a question mark, honestly, after watching his film at the end of the year. If Jalen is playing the Sam, uh, I think that's his position. Uh, he, he's great at crashing uh, and at exploding forward, and his pass rush moves are just sick. So coming forward, I love Jalen. So our linebacking core, um, right now I'd give, with a healthy Sean Lee, I'd give our linebacking core a solid B+, plus, B+, plus, uh, with Sean Lee. Uh, without, you know, probably a C plus, but B plus with Sean Lee. Uh, reason being, um, the other the other two guys, uh, Van Der Esch and Smith, won't really be required to carry the load or make the decisions necessary to put everybody where they need to be. Sean Lee is that general on the field. I call him General Lee um, or Master Lee. You know, got a bow when you say that, but Master Lee because um, he's like, you know, he like Bruce Lee out there, man. But um, definitely, definitely um, feel like our linebacking core is strong and improved from last year. Um, then you have our secondary. I've already kind of beat this one into the ground with Chris Richard. Um, I think our question marks are at safety. But even there, you know, I think Woods, Woods plays well enough. And Heath plays well enough. And I think with Chris Richard putting them in a position where they're not asked to play in that cover two scheme, which which really requires that they cover an entire half of the field. Um, now you have one guy who really is just uh, required to play from hash mark to hash mark. Okay, and that would probably be Heath, who runs a 4-3. I think he can do it. Uh, Heath is, is bad when you ask him to play man and a lot of change direction. But if he's asked to just get over the top of plays and get up underneath, he did that last year very well. Uh, he does that very well. He did it in the Giants game. He did it in the, the uh, Arizona game. He almost had a pick in Arizona on a play where Skandrick got a pass interference. He got an interception doing it in the Giants game. He showed his range in the Raiders game. So Heath, sideline to sideline, is our best asset out there. Honestly, people don't believe that, but Heath is explosive sideline to sideline. And then you have Woods, who I didn't like at the strong safety position. But the way Chris Richard runs his his scheme, Woods actually plays that position very well. He would play that very well because he's good. He's great at watching, at reading, and reacting to the quarterback's eyes in that robber technique. So, uh, and if he is required to carry a receiver up the seam, you know he can. So if he's playing that robber technique that Cam Chancellor plays, um, he's a little bit better in coverage. Not as good against the run as as a Chancellor, but. As far as coverage is concerned, he can transition very well. So he can, he can, he's done it. Watch the KC game where he he, he carries the the receiver uh, through the post pattern, cuts that off, and then as he cuts that off, he drives down on Kelsey and breaks a pass up. That's exactly what is required in that robber uh, style. So there's no, as I was saying, there's no glaring weaknesses there. But then on our front end, when when Randy Gregory comes back. You have Gregory, Irving, 
Collins and D Law starting on your front four. I mean, I don't we could stop there. But then you have Taco and Armstrong backing up those two ends. Uh then Tapper as well in that rotation, which is crazy. You have Jihad Ward backing up a a Irving, I assume. Then you have Crawford in there. And then I think because of the injury to Collins' foot right now, DQ, DeQuinn Osborne makes this team. That's my prediction. And trust me, trust me, I'm cynical at best uh, when it comes to most players. You know that. A lot of you argue with me when I make any assessment of a player. Or, or should I say skeptical at best. DeQuinn Osborne is one of the better players. Forget undrafted free agents. He's one of the better players that we picked up in the draft this year. Period. Period. Not undrafted free agents. Period. I like him better than I like Dorrance Armstrong. You notice I haven't said Dorrance Armstrong's name that much. I will look into him, but he's more of a left end. I think Taco's a left end as well, though, so that you know kind of leaves you uh, with a log jam there. Those two will be, I think, competing for left. I don't think they're right defensive ends. They might have to play there. And, and Rob Marinelli can can do you know, work miracles with the best of them. So, you know, who knows? But I think Taco played better on film when he was on the left side. When he was, But the problem was he was spelling D-Law, who, who was already said to not be uh, not want to get out of games at times. So that kind of cut into Taco's playing time, I believe. Benson Mayoa didn't come back. We didn't bring him back, but he played well on the other side, especially in that Seattle game. But uh, nonetheless, those guys are going to be on the left, I believe. Then you have a tapper whose first step is amazing, uh, who, who I like on the right. People say that he might not make this team. If Charles Tapper doesn't make this team, I feel uh, remiss. I feel some type of way about that because I like him. I just want him to stay healthy enough to – he reminds me of D-Law, like a guy who, who hasn't stayed healthy his first two years and might have an explosive year if he can stay upright this year because his first step is is is, neat, is the best on the team his his first step is probably the best on the team randy gregory's bend is ridiculous tapper's first step and explosiveness is ridiculous so with that said just imagine though that front eight uh on defense i'm excited to see what we do there so you know that's this just and that's that's with or without Gregory, honestly. And and one name that I didn't even bring up, which is which is ridiculous, is uh Connie Ely. I haven't even said his name. You know, so we have so much talent uh in that in that uh defensive line position. Um uh, it's just not much that a team can do against that, uh if they're playing to Rob Marinelli's standard, uh if they are. Last year, we weren't nearly as talented up front due to injuries, suspensions. You know, think about this. Irving only played eight games, and in eight games, he had seven sacks. He missed four games due to uh, concussion, and he missed four games due to suspension. And he had seven sacks and was just a terror for the eight games that he played. So, you know, if he plays a full season, D-Law plays a full season, Gregory and Collins can get together and play a full season, you're looking at something special, very special. Um, but I, 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 I don't know, I got kind of deep in on that. You sleep? No? Uh, got kind of deep in on that. But what I'll say is, go ahead. What I'll say is, um, at the end of the day, um, we really, you know, we, we really have built a team that's built for a lead. You know, we have... Uh, we don't have many defensive tackles who are, you know, kind of the, the uh, Snacks Harris types who run, stop the run or run support guys. Uh, we have a lot of pass rushers. So that's built for a team that wants to put its ears back, pin its ears back, and go. Uh, our offense, you know, if we, if we can get some turnovers to that offense, our offense is a ball control offense built to smash mouth. Everything that we brought in, even our wide receivers, Everything that we've done has has has, has uh, led to me to believe that we're risking it all on the run game, uh, really, uh, and that's both from Dak, Zeke, um, uh, Alawale, and then you have Smith, 
And uh, Tavon, we're, we're going to be running the ball and using exotic uh, formations to run the ball and get the ball out. A lot of uh, misdirections, bootlegs, play actions, RPO. I think we'll be doing that all year. And if we can mix that up uh, successfully, along with just getting one or two, just being plus one or plus two uh, in the turnover uh, ratio, where we're getting one extra ball a game or, or two. I don't care if that's through d due to uh, stops or just straight turnovers. I don't care how you do it, just get us the ball back. But if we're doing that on a regular basis and we can keep Sean Lee upright, our team is looking good. Uh, they really are. Uh, and uh, and that's coming from a, a guy who, who, as you guys say, criticizes Dak. So um, I think we can win with Dak if we're a strong running team. We've already proven that. And uh, running against nine and 10 man front successfully when you only had, and uh, we are missing Witten in that equation, but I think Schultz can block pretty well. But running against nine and 10 man fronts, which we've done uh, on a regular basis, is, uh, is formidable. Not, not too many offensive lines can do that. And we've done it. When they dare Dak to throw, we, we still run the ball and we run it down the throat, it's like, oh, well, we're still going to do it, you know. And when Dak starts hitting those outside uh, plays in play action or calling audibles, I think they need to give him more autonomy. Uh, he needs to be a – now, he calls audibles, but I don't think he calls audibles at will. And I, they need to give him that ability if he doesn't have it already because when you watch the running game, you see a lot of man-on-man, uh, -man, uh, zero coverages, where everyone's in the box trying to stop Zeke. And I don't want Zeke to flatten the tire, which is why I think uh, Alawale and Smith need to get some time too. And Bo. I haven't even said Bo Scarborough's name. I forgot. But our running game is going to be something to, to, to marvel at this year. Um, and we had the other kid, Jihad uh, Thomas, I think his name is, from last year. The kid from Temple. I'm a Philly guy, so I, I remember him. Um, and he was on our practice squad, so you know he might very well make this roster as well. Who knows? But sky's the limit. Sky's the limit for the Dallas Cowboys this year. Um, I'm just curious to see what what type of ripples we add to this playbook. Scott Linehan, you know, I hope that he's you know as advertised and he's he's creative. You know, he he comes out and does what I think he can do. Now that he doesn't have a true number one to feed a ball to, because his history is really, he was brought here for Dez. He wasn't brought here for a quarterback because, you know, Romo already knows knows what he's doing. He was brought here to get Dez open and get Dez the ball. That's really what he was brought here for. Uh, if you think about Linehan's history, he was with Moss, then he was with Megatron, and then he was with us. So every team that he's been with, he's been kind of the guy who was was responsible for feeding the beast so to speak um i think des finds a home for himself uh in um i hope i hope in san fran uh, i think he and garoppolo will uh, mesh very well and 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 do some special things over there if he can let go of his need to stay in the nfc east des will um will do well with a team like san fran garoppolo gets he makes guys like goodwin and uh taylor uh, look great, you know, so I know he'll make Dez look great. Uh, either way, uh, I digress a little bit. This wasn't about Dez, but nonetheless, this team is stacked to do one thing, and I think play smash mouth old school Parcells football, which is ball control football, run the ball until you don't, until you can't run the ball, and, 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 and then jam it down their throats and hold on to it. Take your time at the line, and then get you a defense that can get you the ball back once or twice a game. That's it. And if we could score on defense, which Chris Richard's defense is due, we already know that too well. I think they scored on us once <laughs> last year but uh, with that pick six. But if we could start scoring on defense, the sky is the limit. We, we weren't a very stingy or opportunistic defense last year. We weren't. And we were still rank, uh, I think, 11. Uh, and, and eight versus the, uh, the pass, I think 11th overall. So I think we're top five. And that was 11th overall with Sean Lee missing five games. I think if Sean Lee played the, those five games last year, we were a top five defense. And it doesn't look that way, but we were. Uh, look at the games that we even lost. It was a battle of attrition. They kind of wore us down. Atlanta 
didn't like come in and just blow by our defense. It's just that, uh, you know, we they got too many, uh, they, the defense is on the field too long. They got too many opportunities due to the offense not being able to move the ball. Uh, same thing with the Chargers. They didn't score anything in the first half. The Eagles didn't score anything in the first half. You know, and that's without Sean Lee. Uh, they didn't score anything. They weren't doing anything. We were up 9-7. Seattle, they scored because of turnovers. Like, our defense was a lot better than people give it credit for. Um, the Green Bay game was probably uh, Green Bay and um, and the Rams. Even the Rams. People talk about the Rams beating us 35-30, to 30, but what they don't pay attention to is about, I think, 19 of those uh, hold on. out of the 35 i think only 14 so so 21 points right were on field goals i believe let me see can you get 21 points on field goals my math sucks but i think only 14 points of the 35 points was there, there were two touchdowns that were offensive the rest was field goals so they beat us with their leg that was great defense it's just we didn't do enough offensively and we didn't keep them out of the red zone uh, uh, enough, but we definitely held them in check. We just couldn't, we didn't play ball control ball. That's all. That's all. They were able to get the offense, their offense, enough opportunities against us to kick field goals. They beat us with field goals. Uh, Green Bay, you know, that's Green Bay. They, and then Denver, of course, Denver kind of squashed our offense. And if our offense, any offense that's not effective is going to, is going to lead to a defense that's tired and, and, and ran ragged and I think the entire team just dropped the ball that game so minus those two games uh, Green Bay and the Denver Broncos our defense was lights out the entire year um, the Eagles game had the second half of those games shows that you know with the Eagles games the Chargers games and Atlanta those were coaching uh, games when the game was close at halftime that shows that the teams, both of them, were be well prepared for the other team's first shot. We were well prepared for theirs. They were well prepared for, for ours. But what didn't happen was uh, adjustments. There were no adjustments made uh, in the second half on our part in the Atlanta game. There were no adjustments made on our part in the Chargers game. If there were, they weren't the right adjustments. Uh, even the Eagles game, you know, those games – uh, we we could have we could have come out on top of those games and the Seattle game, we could have come out on top even after Dez's fumble, which was in the first half. Uh, after the fumble, after everything, we, we you know his his interception, the interception that bounced off his hands was untimely. But even after that fumble, we had an opportunity to come back and smack them in the mouth. Uh, we just we were kind of flat offensively, and I don't blame Dak solely for that. I don't. Um, I think that our coaching staff wasn't looking at what we were actually able to do well, and they were kind of stubborn. Garrett's very stubborn when it comes to what he wants to do. So I think like, he said it actually one in one game. He said, "I like what we're doing. And we're gonna keep doing it." And, like, and uh, you know, well, we saw what happened down the stretch. But uh, nonetheless, I digress once again. Uh, me and Rain we're about to go in the house and drink some tea or something. I know I am. I'm tired, but um, I'll be uh, getting Master Lee's video out to you guys uh, probably later today. If not today, it'll be tomorrow. Uh, Sean Lee is amazing, man. And watching his film is a treat, uh, honestly. I watch a lot of guys that are like question marks, so, you know, I'm used to seeing guys that just, you know, they whiff on plays and you can find good, bad, and ugly. Sean Lee... I don't find any ugly. I really don't. And I don't know how this man is not talked about as being like the best linebacker in the league. He should be in that argument. You know, he should be in that argument as being the best linebacker in the league. Not best will linebacker, not best middle, best linebacker in the league if he's playing. And that's a serious argument. You can name whoever you want. You can say Luke Keekley. You can say he plays as well. You can't say he plays better. You can't. You can't. And you could say stats, right? People use stats and they say numbers don't lie. Yes, they do. Numbers definitely lie. And the reason I say they lie, Sean Lee's stats in certain games will say seven tackles, one assist, right? Like in the Giants game, I'll show you. 
but he was a he was he was accounted for like 18 breakups or 18 plays that he himself disrupted out of 56 snaps. Okay, so 33% of the game defensively was decided by Sean Lee. That's amazing. That's amazing. Like that means one out of three plays he's stopping or he's he's screwing it up for somebody. Whether he's tackling someone or he's running up underneath a route. He might not get the pass breakup because he might not hit the ball, but he's where he needs to be so much so that quarterbacks have to make different decisions. And I'll show you those plays. Sean Lee is amazing. Amazing. All right. But uh, I'll talk enough. I'll talk to you guys uh, tomorrow, and you'll, you'll see or hear from me soon. I'm also uh, going to be sitting and uh, having lunch with you guys on a regular basis now um, just so I can get these out. Like, I'm on a health kick. And I feel like if I sit down and um, um, express myself, I like to talk while I eat. So if I express myself with you guys uh, uh, while eating uh, lunch or something like that, that'll be fun for me. Uh, it's something, something new to do. So, you know, I'll try it with you guys and see what you think. But uh, nonetheless, talk to you soon. I'm out.